we're going to go ahead and go right into our next presentation. What's up, everyone? I'm Sunny with the Be Kind Crew, and I want to welcome you to Connect to STEM TV. Organized by the University of Arizona College of Medicine, Phoenix, in partnership with Cox Communications and the Arizona SciTech Festival. That's right, you're about to enter the wonderful world of STEM and have fun with your very own project. Are you ready? Let's go. Wow, that was so fun. Up next, we'll be able to meet our simulated human being. I don't know if you've ever met him before, but his name is Hal. So let's go over and meet him now. Well, hello there. I was just about to check out a very special patient we have here in the simulation center. His name is Hal, and he is a robot, or mannequin, that helps our medical student learn how to take care of patients. He can talk and cry, just like you and me. Let's go talk to him. Hello, my name is John, and what's your name? Hi, um, my name is Hal. Nice to meet you, Hal. And how old are you? I just turned six years old. Wow, happy birthday, six years old. Have you been washing your hands? Um, well, we want to make sure that you're washing your hands super well. We do have a virus going around, and I want to make sure that you don't feel sick. So try to remember to wash your hands as often as you can. This includes before you eat, after you play, and after you touch anything that could be dirty. If you need to wash your hands quickly, you can use hand sanitizer. And the virus is almost like little germs that live on things that can make you feel sick later. Oh no, my mommy said that germs are bad. Well, have you been coughing or sneezing lately? No. Have you had a headache recently? Uh-uh, no. Well, that's good, that's good. Do you mind if I listen to your heart? And it won't hurt, but it just might feel a little cold. Oh, I don't mind. Thank you. And have you been eating your fruits and vegetables? Oh, yes. I really like apples and oranges. They're my favorite. Well, that's good. And your heart sounds good. And you must, you must be playing a lot of tag and even soccer to make your heart pump so well. I'd like to listen to your lungs now, if that's OK. Well, I'm glad you've been eating fruits and vegetables and getting lots of good nutrients to keep you strong and healthy. And your lungs sound good, too. Now I'm going to check on your knee, OK? OK. And I believe you said it was the right knee. Now, how bad does your right knee hurt if I press down on it? Zero to 10. Oh, it's 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10. Oh, my mommy. <laughs> No, I'm sorry, Hal. Uh, here, here's a tissue. I'll make I'll make sure to get your mommy right away, okay? Okay. Now I do have a sticker. Would you like a sticker? Oh yes, thank you. I love stickers. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Now I want to make sure that you get the right medicine to help your knee feel better. And try to be careful next time you're playing so that your knee doesn't hurt, okay? Okay, thank you. Well, it looks like you're good to go and, and your mommy is right outside the door waiting for you. I want you to have a wonderful day and remember to wash your hands. Hi, mommy. You're awesome. Thank you. I feel so much better now. Wow, that was exciting. 
Up next, we'll be learning a little bit more about suturing from one of our medical students. So let's dive right in. First off, what is suturing? Suturing is when someone uses a needle and thread to help sew someone up when they have some kind of cut or wound. By sewing someone up, you're basically able to make sure that all the person's insides stay inside and stop the patient from getting infected with nasty germs. Tools that are needed to suture include an anesthetic to help numb the pain, syringe, two different needles, a suture with thread, a needle driver, some forceps, scissors, and a suture pad that already has cuts in it so you can practice. Some people also will practice with bananas or raw chicken, but we typically like to prefer to use a suture pad. In order to help with getting stitches feel less uncomfortable for a person, doctors will use an anesthetic to help numb the pain. Doctors will inject this clear liquid near the edges of an owie so it does not hurt when the needle goes through the skin. Watch as the student practices good technique. Now, using the needle driver, you're going to want to carefully pull the needle out of its packaging. Try not to poke yourself. These needles are very sharp. In your other hand, use the forceps to help hold the wound together so it's easier to sew and so that the skin can heal properly. Place the needle perpendicular to the skin at about the same space from the wound as how deep you plan on going into the skin. Turn the needle through the skin, then using your forceps, grab the other side of the needle and pull it slowly. Now you're going to repeat that same thing as you pull the needle through the other side of the wound. You're gonna wanna pull the needle Pull the thread until there's only a three to four centimeter tail of thread left over. Next, using your needle driver, wrap the thread around it two times and grab the tail of the thread. Gently pull the needle driver back and tighten the knot, almost like you're tying your shoes. Next, we're gonna repeat that same technique of wrap, grasp, and pull so that you can tie another knot so it can be nice and strong. You will want to tie about, hmm, about four knots here so it can be four times as strong. Now we're gonna make it look pretty for our patients so that they don't have loose strings everywhere. We are going to cut the string so that there's only one centimeter hanging out. And now you know how to suture. I knew you were one sharp needle. <laughs> That's great. Our simulation center at the University of Arizona College of Medicine in Phoenix is an important resource um, for all of our students. This way they have the opportunity to practice on the mannequins, like you saw how, before they're able to go out and meet with patients in real life. Now I'd like to ask my colleague Anne-Marie Medina to join me, and we have some more videos to show you on suturing. Good morning, Caroline. These are very interesting. I'm really excited to see all the things that are happening in our simulation centers. I have a couple of videos that I thought might be interesting to our listeners, um, and I'm going to share my screen really quickly here. And let me show you this one first. <laughs> Get hands-on with the surgery of the future, the Da Vinci Surgical Robot. Um, so today we're demoing the surgical robot. So um, we have... Whoops, sorry about that have it inserted into a fake abdomen, just like we would in the operating room. And then we insert these small metal tubes called trocars through the abdominal wall. And then we can insert our robotic instruments. So we attach those metal tubes to the robot and then insert our instruments. And when, we're, when our instruments are in place and our 
our cameras in place, we sit down on a machine right next to the bed and we operate those instruments from the machine. Participants can sit down on the robot and try it out and move the instruments around and we even have a computerized version that they can play with. Um, you know, I, I knew very at a very young age that I wanted to be a doctor and so I kind of stayed on that path. Um, and through my um, career in surgery, I eventually stumbled on to robotic surgery, which is a whole other field in STEM. Um, and maybe something I would have liked to be involved in earlier on. Get involved in the College of Medicine. So there's a lot of activities here for kids interested in medicine and in science. Um, and through the college, there are ways to get involved in uh, surgery and uh, coming to check out uh, robotic surgery particularly. We also learned about how to stitch um, using the simulated skin, the artificial tissue. And I believe uh, Meryl is going to be here again today to talk about that in a little more detail. But let's look at it, what it looks like when you have to do it with uh, something else like a grape. great example of how they use the robot to do suturing um, on small little parts. And of course, we would absolutely love for you to be able to come and see us at the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. We know right now that's not possible, so we'd like to... Welcome to Phoenix Biomedical Campus, a vibrant place to transform, discover, and collaborate with three universities and bioscience partners. The Phoenix Biomedical Campus, or PBC, spans 30 acres providing researchers, educators, students, and clinicians unique opportunities to spark collaboration and growth in the biomedical industry. The PBC sits on the City of Phoenix's own land and was established in 2004 by an initiative between the City, University of Arizona, Arizona State University, and the Arizona Board of Regents to expand medical education and research in Phoenix. The University of Arizona, College of Medicine Phoenix, is the anchor of the campus. As a result of its high concentration of research scientists and physicians, the PBC has become a premier and dynamic location for biomedical research. The University of Arizona Health Sciences presence in Phoenix includes the medical school, nursing, pharmacy, and the Melanina Zuckerman College of Public Health. The University of Arizona's Eller College of Management is also on campus. The campus is the only site where you will find all three Arizona's public universities in one location, conducting and collaborating in research. Additionally, NAU has close to 600 students on campus studying athletic training, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and physician's assistant programs. Also included on the campus is the Translational Genomics Research Institute known for its groundbreaking research. Phoenix Union Bioscience High School, Arizona State University College of Health Solutions, University of Arizona Cancer Center at St. Joseph's, National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, and more. At full build-out, the Phoenix Biomedical Campus is anticipated to generate an economic impact of $2.1 billion annually. The Phoenix Biomedical Campus has come a long way since 2004 and boasts institutes of excellence in precision medicine, genomics, molecular medicine, cancer research, healthcare analytics, and others. 
Nowhere is this more concentrated than on the Phoenix Biomedical Campus. That was just a great example of some of the wonderful things that are happening on our campuses. And um, I will drop the link to all of those uh, videos into the chat so that you can see the full YouTube um, videos that we have on all of the campuses, both here in uh, Tucson, where I'm at, and up in Phoenix, where Carolyn is at. So thanks, okay. Carolyn. And I think we have another session coming up pretty soon. We do. Thank you, Anne-Marie. What exciting things that we've learned so far this morning. So I have a question for you. Who would like to be a physician? Who would like to be a doctor? Well, coming up in just a few minutes at 10 o'clock, get ready to scrub in for Saturday Scrubs. So those of you who have been with us since 9 o'clock, maybe you've been sitting there, you've been watching and learning all these great things. So I'm going to encourage you right now to stand up dance a little bit, maybe do a couple jumping jacks. We'll be back in just a few minutes with Saturday Scrubs. Go grab a glass of water, bring your parents over too, because they're going to want to learn all of this great information. We will be back in just a minute, but before we go, we have a message from our friend Sunny from the Be Kind Dance Crew. Wasn't that fun? You did great. Do me a favor, before the end of the day today, tell a friend or grown-up something you learned today. Be sure to check back for more Connect to STEM TV. There's lots more cool videos to check out. You know what? I should invite my friends to join the next session so we can work together virtually. Don't forget you need to register here. Special thanks to our sponsors, Banner Health APS, for their great support. For more nerdy ideas, follow Connect to STEM on Facebook. And here are some important reminders. Be kind, wash your hands, and mask up.